In this tutorial, we're going to be finishing up our clock's initial texture and assigning it to our clock 3D model. Now, the first thing we need to do is save this texture out of Adobe Photoshop. So I'm going to File, Save As, and now simply select the file format that, that's compatible with Maya. I'll be using a TIFF, calling it Texture. Click Save. Yes, overwrite it. Um, image compression, none. Pixel order at the default. Byte order at the default. Um, there's no transparency option as this image has no transparency. And discard layers and save as a copy. That basically means we won't be saving any of the text layers or the individual layers we use to create the rim. Then click OK. And now your file's been saved to your hard drive. The next thing we need to do is go back to Maya and load up this object's material into the attributes editor so we can begin assigning our texture to it. The quickest way of doing that is on the rendering shelf, click this button here. This will load up the material that's on the selected object in the attributes editor for you. And the first thing we need to do is create a file node and attach that file node to, to the color channel of our Lambert material. So I'm going to click on this icon here and now I'm going to create a file node inside the create render node window and now I'm going to point the image name of that file node to our texture there it is now the texture has been assigned to the model you may not be able to see it in the viewport right now but if I was to render the scene you can see it's already been assigned. So the reason we can't see it in the viewport is because Maya isn't enabled to display textures. You have to enable Maya to display textures in the viewport. So to do that, go to Shading, Hardware Texturing, check it, and now your textures appear in your Maya viewport. Before I end this tutorial, I'm going to select the rim or the body of our clock and assign a new blend material to it. I can do this once again on the rendering shelf. Reduce the color to black. And that concludes part 8 of my clock modeling tutorial series. In the next parts I'll be modeling the hands.